Hello everybody, what is up? What's poppin'? How are you? Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Victoria Rose. I am a 24 year old woman of transgender experience and I make all kinds of content on here from femininity content to commentary content, reaction contents to makeup things like this. In case you didn't just hear me say in the intro, I'm trans. And I used to feel that the more makeup I wore, the better. That if I had a bunch of makeup caked on, then it would make me pass better. That I would be able to contour and highlight my way into passing. And that's simply not the truth. This is zero hate whatsoever to any drag queens. Drag queens built the foundations that we build our makeup on. Anything from contour and highlighting to baking. That is all from drag queens. I say stop looking like a drag queen because so many trans women like myself have a applied so much makeup onto their face because they feel that they have to, otherwise they look like a man. But in reality, it does literally the opposite. I used to walk around my hometown with a full coverage, full face of makeup all day, every day for no reason. I'd be walking around at 11 a.m. with contour, highlight, cut brows, cut liner, like lashes up to God. And that's great if that's how you wanna look, but I was doing all of that because I wanted to blend in. And in reality, I was doing quite the opposite. Sometimes I wish I could go back in time with a little Neutrogena wipe and just like wipe all of that away because I didn't need it. And it was making me break out, it was making me stand and now I was just, it was so counterproductive. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you all how to cover up any discoloration, any beard shadow, any blemishes that you need while maintaining an even and natural looking finish. You see how this still looks like skin? So I'm going to show you the bare bones sort of basic look that is just a little bit of skin, the mascara and the brows, and then I want to build it up to looking the way that it does now off camera. This way you can go to the club and people can see you from all different angles and it still looks like you it still just looks like you have nice skin and not a ton of makeup on. I am so excited to dive into this tutorial and before I do, I have a word from our wonderful sponsors over at Catch Beauty. Hi there, if you know me, if you've been following me for a while, then you would know that body hair removal and permanent body hair removal has been a huge roadblock in my transition. For years, I had to shave my arms and my legs every single day if I wanted a smooth result and I had already spent thousands of dollars hand over fist at Salon and electrolysis lasers on my face and my bikini, so I was just not interested in spending that money on my whole body. So I did some research and that is when I found Catch Beauty's at home IPL laser hair removal device. This laser is my top recommended method of permanent hair removal and permanent hair reduction. I, like I said, used to have to shave my arms like every single day and you can see here, I have no hairs. The ones that I do are like blonde hairs that wouldn't be picked up anyway. With our IPL that you can get salon quality results at home for a fraction of the price. Also, it's in the comfort of your own home and you can use it anywhere on your entire body. Instead of booking a section for your calf and then your thigh and then your tummy and then your chest, girl, you would be in a salon for years. On top of their incredible products, I really love what Catch Beauty stands for. They have been supporting the trans community since day one, providing us with resources. Catch Beauty wants to help us through even the hairiest parts of our transition. So whether you are trans, not trans, man, woman, somewhere in between, if you want permanent hair removal and permanent hair reduction, I highly recommend you click the link in my description box down below. Check out the Catch Beauty at home IPL laser hair removal device and use code ROSE to get money off your order. Thank you so much to Catch Beauty for sponsoring this portion of today's video and for supporting transgender women like me every single day. And without further ado, let's dive in to how to stop looking like a drag queen. All right, so you want to do your makeup, but you don't want to look like a drag queen. You don't want to look like a crossy. You want to look like a natural woman. The most important step for literally anybody, but especially for trans women, is the base. You want your skin to be as moisturized and as smooth as possible. Make sure your skin is clean, exfoliated, shaved if you gotta shave. Use whatever oils or serums you wanna use and moisturize. Now, priming is optional. I personally typically choose not to prime my face unless I'm doing like a super glam look, but this is gonna be more of like a natural everyday look that can be elevated into something a little bit more glam while still not looking like a drag queen. I'm sure I said it at the beginning of the video, but like this is no shade drag queens whatsoever. In fact, I actually used to do drag, which that's a story for another time. So when it comes to the skin of a trans woman, the two most important things that we are looking to remedy 
are texture and discoloration. Many trans women, especially early on in your transition, you might have rougher skin, you might have deeper pores, and you might have some roughness around the beard area if you are still shaving. And of course, you may have some discoloration, some beard shadow in your facial hair area. And there are ways to cover this up without having a full second skin painted on. So we're gonna jump into that. Sort of like the theme of this video is that you are your own worst critic. I know myself, I used to wear a full coverage foundation every single day with like full color corrector over my whole beard area. And I looked pretty much the same as they do now. Even while I was going through electrolysis and laser, I was just so insecure and I was like, oh my God, I have such a heavy beard shadow and I see that all the time. I'll put up some examples right here that people feel that they have all these flaws that they just don't have. Your dysphoria is trying to tell you that you are a big, hairy, ugly, manly man and no one else sees that. And even if you do have shadow to cover, there are ways to do it without painting on a whole second skin. So we're gonna jump into that here. I personally don't have really any shadows that I'm trying to cover. I have a little bit, even though I've had laser and electrolysis, I have a little bit of a shadow above the lip, but I don't even bother covering it because less is more and no one would notice it anyway. However, I have severe dark circles. Let me bring you in a little bit. So I have some pretty intense dark circles, at least I think so. Again, we're all our own worst critics. So I'm going to go in and color correct those. So what you see under here is a lot of blue and that is because the skin is thin and there are veins there. So we are going to color correct that using a mixture of two different products. A lot of people will go in with something like this, a deep orange color corrector and depending on your skin tone, that might be great. But on me, that is painting something so much darker. Look at the value of your skin. Look at like the light to dark value. This is so much darker than my skin. It would be the opposite of what I need. So we're going to raise the value to match my skin tone or lower the value to match your skin tone to match the value and to cancel out the color under your eyes or on your beard or whatever. So to do that, I'm just gonna take some of this orangey product. I really don't wanna use much because it is so dark. Look at how deep that is in comparison. And then this e.l.f. concealer that is lighter than my skin tone, go ahead and mix them together. And the key here is that you want it to be thin, but you want it to dry down completely. You don't want to powder over it, but you want it to dry down. Okay, so here you see I have raised the value to match my skin tone more, and it's just an orangey peachy concealer. So let's go in and I'm just going to apply a little bit under the eyes or onto the beard shadow or wherever you need to do that needs the coverage. You need to stop color correcting like those girls you see on YouTube and Instagram. That's not realistic for every day. Most of them don't need that. It's just clickbaity and it makes you want to click on the video. That is not going to make you look good. It's going to make you look like a crossy. So we're going to go in just a little bit under the eyes. Now we are not blending this out much. We are only applying it exactly to where we need to. I'm gonna do it right on the inner circle right there. So you can see it's just sort of exactly that line. And we're gonna do the same on this side. I'm just gonna kind of tap that in a little bit, but not blending it out. I just want it to really sink into the skin where it was placed. So you might be asking yourself, Victoria, why would I put more and more layers of product on my face if I want it to look natural and like I'm not wearing makeup? Here is your answer. We are working in very thin layers. It doesn't really matter how many layers you have on your face as long as they are thin and not covering the entire thing. I was making the mistake for so long of just doing a full coverage foundation because it was easy and it was fast, but this can also be easy and fast. and It'll improve the integrity of your skin over time. You can see I've got a little bit of the color corrector underneath my eyes. It actually just kind of looks like I have some concealer on, but trust me in person, it is definitely way more peachy. So I'm gonna let this dry down completely before applying any product over it, but I am going to mix up my tinted moisturizer. So because I'm not using a full coverage foundation or anything, I really on an everyday basis wouldn't do this. But just as an example, you can kind of see, let me take you in even more, yikes. Um, you can kind of see I have a couple breakouts, a couple um, discoloration marks from previous breakouts. So what I wanna do is not completely erase everything because that's not natural, it's not gonna look like skin. I want to create the illusion that it's at least all one tone. The reason why you wanna wait for the color corrector to fully dry before you apply any makeup on top of it is because 
A, you would lose some of the coverage of the color corrector, but B, you would just be mixing it into the rest of your face and it's just gonna give a weird orangey or peachy look. There would also be a higher chance that it would shine through your makeup and so throughout the day you would start to have sort of like an orangey beard and that is so not cute, girl. I really like the skin of my cheekbones. I like that I have a natural flush there so I try not to put any makeup on top of it because I just like how it shines through. You can get away with a lot more coverage in little areas and we'll get to that in a minute. If you are covering up some shadow on your face, you can build the coverage of your tinted moisturizer or you can use a tinted moisturizer on the rest of your face and then use the foundation on the areas that need more coverage or even a concealer. Now with the damp beauty sponge, I'm just gonna go in, it's actually not a beauty blender, this is Real Techniques and it works the same if not better than a beauty blender. Don't ever buy a beauty blender ever again. Get this at the dollar, like, at the dollar store, I wish. Get this at the drugstore and it is just gonna change your life. So you can see that some of the, um, you know, different textures and colors and stuff shine through in the areas that I don't have any coverage in. And that's okay. I want that to show through because everyone's face has that. It is abnormal and it's gonna look weird if you don't. Okay, so I am actually super happy with the coverage of all of this, even the under eyes, because you can see that they look so much better with just the color corrector. So that is pretty much dry to the touch. I'm just gonna be really sure that it's all in there. It still looks like me. You can still see all of my skin shining through. It doesn't look like I have a ton of makeup on. You can still see some of my blemishes, but it looks like my skin has an even texture to it. It doesn't look like you're wearing a full face of makeup. You can keep it like that, but I do have a couple little blemishes here, there, and one right up here from tweezing my eyebrow. I'm gonna show you how you can cover them. You can get away with a lot of coverage in one little area because it just acts like an eraser. And then I'm gonna show you how I do my under eyes. I have been on such a journey with my under eyes, y'all. It has been, it has been a journey. It has been a journey, let me tell you that. I'm almost 25 and I'm right around the age where like my skin is just starting to change a little bit and like it's starting to crease. So that's all new to me. Maintaining the natural finish, I'm going to go in with, this is a Nars concealer that matches my skin tone. Dab it lightly there. Right there. And right there. I am going to conceal it right here just because I hate this little dip that I have and more coverage just kind of makes it look more flat and I want that. And then I'm also just gonna do here and here under the nose just because I have some redness. Anyone that has estrogen in their veins does. So I'm just going right in and blending that in. I love this really tiny concealer brush from Morphe because you have so much more control with it. So yes, this makeup is feminizing, but that's not the main priority of this makeup. This is so you can leave the house and have something natural where you're not gonna have people staring at you. Maybe it looks like you have makeup on, but it doesn't look like you're painted to go to the club when you're in a small town at noon. You know, not that there's anything wrong with that, but if you're trying to blend in more, that's not gonna help. So with this little brush, sometimes I'll use my fingers actually, but I will just, Pat that in, remove any extra product from the brush. So it's time for the under eyes, girl. Under eyes also include over eyes. So by that, I mean right in here, for me especially, is very dark. And I like to illuminate all of this. You will see in something coming very soon where I help you with feminizing makeup, I explain that this area right in here for a lot of trans women and some cis women, but especially in trans women because we tend to have a overarching brow bone. And that is one of the most important procedures that people get in facial feminization surgery. They get a lift, which I'll talk about, and they get their brow bone shaved down. So what we're gonna do is we're going to illuminate this whole area and we're going to draw back this whole area. I'll show you how. Going back in with the NARS concealer, less is more, you can always build it up. So I'm just gonna go in here, here, and, and there. This especially is the area that makes my eye look so dark and deep. So we're gonna leave that there and apply to the other eye. We're looking gorgeous. We're gonna go in either with our fingers, a beauty sponge, or my new favorite, a tiny little concealer brush, and we're gonna pat it in. We don't wanna be swiping, we don't wanna be buffing, we wanna pat it in to maintain all of the coverage. Okay. 
this line that you see right here is going to disappear with some powder, so don't you worry about that, but you can see it has concealed so much of my under eye. Oh my god, it's so bad. Hold on, you'll see, you'll see. So, our under eyes are covered. Here's my trick to getting it to actually sit on your skin, look good, and not crease throughout the day. Not crease is kind of generous because if you have skin, your makeup's going to crease. If you make expressions, if you smile, if you move, your makeup's going to crease no matter what. But this will prevent creasing. So we're gonna let this sit on the skin, we're gonna let it dry down, and we're gonna buff away any little lines or settling that we see, and then go in with the pressed powder, and are going to roll it into the skin. Correction, not pressed powder, a loose powder. Then we are going to go in with a loose powder and press it into the skin. While that sets, I'm gonna have a little DC break. By the way, I don't wanna come out as anti-gay or anti-trans, <laughs> but I'm sure y'all have heard the Sam Smith, Kim Petras, Unholy song. <sighs> Sounds unholy to me. It just was kind of a stinker. For me, I mean, obviously not to the rest of the world. Congratulations to them. They won a Grammy, I think. Congratulations to them. I love Kim Petras and her music, but I didn't like Unholy. Probably like literally my least favorite Kim Petras song. So if you need more coverage, you can go back in with your concealer after things dry down and add on to it. But I really feel like the less coverage, the better. You want it to look like your skin is really healthy and happy now that you have a ton of makeup on. That being said, I do have very dark under eyes, so I'm not afraid about my under eyes looking like I have some makeup on because a lot of people wear under eye concealer and mascara and stuff. I'm concerned about looking like I am painted for filth with a cut contour and you know, all that. The NARS concealer, the new method of applying my makeup, and then also this powder has been such a game changer for my under eyes. This is the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. It is so good. It is so good, and I'm so poor. <laughs> Not really, but like all these influencers will have like six of these and be like, oh, I never finished them, and like whatever. I use this only for my under eyes. The rest of my face, I set with this, the Cody Airspun. The rest of it I set with this, but this is for my under eyes because it's my holy grail. I literally got it because I'm doing my own makeup for my wedding, and I want to look snatched, so I paid for the powder. Actually, Chris paid for it, isn't that nice? <laughs> The under eyes have dried down significantly, so this next part I'm not even going to talk through. I'll just explain first because it is too precious of a moment in which you can set your under eyes. So I'm going to go in with this brush, buff away any little lines or anything that I see, and while it is still perfect, I'm going to look up and with some loose setting powder that I've rubbed into this puff, I'm going to press and roll press and roll into my skin. Do you see what I mean when I say when you set it, it like looks so much better? Oh my God, like what? So this is without it being set, you can see all the texture and stuff. Girl, what? So we're gonna do the other side, hold on. And we are back, the under eyes are covered. Honestly, I feel like the coverage could have been just a little bit better, but overall, so happy with how it turned out. I did not use much concealer. I only used the color corrector and a bit of the NARS concealer under my eyes. The rest of the face, I'm not gonna bother setting because I don't want it to look too makeup-y, but if you have, something covering your beard or whatever, make sure that you are going in and patting it all in with powder to make sure that it does not budge all day. I feel so much fucking prettier now with my under eyes covered, wow. So your main face is done, congratulations. You have covered your beard, your under eyes, whatever else you have to do. And look, this whole area has little to no makeup whatsoever on it because I didn't need the coverage so I didn't apply it. I am, however, going to go in and bronze my whole face. So here's the deal. Some people prefer a putty or liquid bronzers and stuff and contours and contour sticks and that's great if you want to do that. I am not here to teach you how to contour and highlight your face. If you want to see that video, I'll link right up here and down below. I've done it before. This is sort of like a natural everyday thing that I would wear to go to 
a sports bar, literally wore this to go watch the game against my will at like 3 p.m. the other day in broad daylight in my hometown. Well, like kind of my hometown, whatever. So I'm going in with the Sephora bronzer. This is a great dupe for the Hoola, by the way. I talked to some TikToker about this recently. It's pretty neutral. It's not very orangey. They have ones that are orangey. They also have cool tones. This, instead of doing an entire contour effect, I'm just gonna go in and blend some bronzer in and make it really look like it's a part of my skin. Just apply it wherever you would either be hit by the sun or an area that you want to recede. For me, that is always pretty much my entire forehead except for this circle. Otherwise, all around it. <laughs> The forehead is looking bronze, honey. The forehead is looking bronze. If you keep like this area pretty natural, you can get away with a lot of funny business going on up here. I normally don't do bronzer on the cheeks because I like it to be a little more round, but I'm just gonna go and do it anyway. Why the hell not? Bronzing, done, incredible. So you can skip any of these steps. You don't have to do every single one. I am going to apply some blush just sort of like on the outside of my face. Love this blush brush, by the way, so good. I've been using like an old Estee Lauder one for my mom, and I just got a whole new thing of MUA brushes, bitch, so. I actually feel like sometimes adding more products makes makeup look more natural because you're adding pigment in all the right places to where it looks much more cohesive. Okay, so all of our base is done. It is looking so nice, but to just kind of bring the skin back to life, I'm going to set it. I actually enjoy doing this before the rest of my makeup because if I do it after my mascara, sometimes it can like transfer to my lids and I hate that. So we're just going to go right in. Just kind of brought a little bit more dewiness to my face. It's not a dewy one, but it just makes it last longer and it looks more like melted together and less powdery. For the eyes, we want it to be very natural. You can skip any shadow if you want. You don't have to do any shadow whatsoever. But personally, as I said, I like to keep this area very bright. And then this area, I like to recede. So it looks like my eyes lifted and the brow bone is less prominent. And again, honey, you can do this without it looking like drag. So I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of this lighter color that I have hit pan on right here. And I'm just going to pack that on the inner corner and then blend it onto the entire lid to kind of just create a little bit of a base. You could not see that at all, I'm so sorry. Boom, boom just looks a lot deeper there than in here. And it does look like this eye is bigger, but that's okay because we're gonna balance it out and you'll see the illusion and full effect in a second. All right, so with that applied, we are going to go in with the same bronzer that we used in the rest of the face and we're gonna bring it to the eyes. I like to use bronzer because A, it's not that full coverage, so it gives you a more natural finish, but also because you're just tying in the colors from the rest of your face into your eyes, so it looks like it's all more natural. You can also build up the coverage if you wanna use the bronzer and then like a deeper brown to kind of really build the crease, but we're just going for natural here. See that? So we're just bringing it up. I actually, despite again, this sounding like it's gonna be insane, I bring it all the way up to the eyebrows. And the reason why I do that, again, this is the bronzer shade. So I'm marrying it up to here where the rest of the bronzer is. So I just put it right on there going down. So it looks like this is all one uniform receding area, you know? It just sort of mellows out the brow bone that so many of us go in to get shaved down. So you see what I'm going for. It does look like I have makeup on, but it doesn't look like I have full coverage on or something because I don't, obviously. So keeping it natural, we're gonna leave the eyes looking like this for now and then just go in with mascara, but we are going to go in with this brow gel. This is actually the Jekka Black Brow Gel. This is the best brow gel I've ever used next to just using Got To Be Glued Hair Spiking Gel. Now here is what you wanna do with your brows. <laughs> I pluck my brows pretty thin. I only pluck the bottoms. I leave the tops because I want it to be as high up as possible. And then with a brow gel, I'll laminate them all up, brush the top to make it all even, and then fill in any sparse areas. I know it's looking really bushy right now, but let it dry down, give it a second. Give it a second. Okay, so again, yes, they are looking pretty bushy right now, but this is where the magic happens. You take this, go around the top of it, and push them all into position. Let's 
So again, they're not perfect. You can leave them like this if you want. I think this looks great. I would totally go out like this. But in a moment, I'm gonna go in with a brow pen. Before I do that, I'm gonna let these dry down and I'm gonna go in with mascara. So apply the mascara, kind of self-explanatory. I'll just cut ahead to when I have it on like now. Tell me I am not looking fresh-faced and beautiful. Hello? Oh my God, just the little mascara is just like so... Uh, to kind of draw the brows up, I am just going to fill them in a little bit with this brow pen. And ladies and gentlemen, you have your natural, clean, feminizing makeup for every day. You don't look like a drag queen. I'm going to go and sort of amp it up a little bit with some lashes and just a little bit of shadow and show you how you can take this natural daytime look and sort of elevate it for the evening. I'm actually going to go pick up my wedding dress in a little bit and I have a meeting later. So I will be wearing this makeup all day long and it just looks fresh faced and healthy. So I'll show you what the final product looks like right now. Okay, everybody, so this is the finished look with a little bit extra added onto it. So I just added a tiny bit more eyeshadow and I added a couple individual lashes as well as just a little bit, just a little bit of the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Milk on the inner part of my eye just to kind of brighten it up a little bit. But you can see even this, I kind of made it more of a nighttime look. This is something that I would feel comfortable wearing to the club, although I love some intense makeup. So if you want to do that, go ahead. I do all the time. But if you feel like you go out and you look like some drag queen or whatever, this is a face that you can apply and it just looks natural-ish. It's natural enough. It looks like you have, you know, maybe some eyeshadow on, definitely. Maybe some, like, eyelash extensions that need to be filled. This is why I don't like individual lashes. Whatever. But it doesn't look like you have a ton of makeup on, so I hope that you all enjoyed this look. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. It helps on my channel so much. Again, this is no hate whatsoever to drag queens. Drag queens have built the foundations for us for makeup for so many years, and not to mention their makeup looks incredible. But as a trans woman, we really want to make sure that we look as natural and as fish as possible. So I hope this is serving um, what it should serve. Thank you all so much for spending your time with me and until I see you next week, good luck, I love you, bye.